This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. All right, welcome everyone to the March uh, 2024 North Haven Planning and Zoning Meeting. And uh, we have a fairly light schedule tonight, so bring that uh, along. I want to uh, uh, start out by, I, I want to ask Alan if there's any changes to the... Uh... There's one change. Item number three regarding 400 Valley Service Road is postponed. They're uh, headed to wetlands at the end of the month, um, so hopefully we'll hear them next month. So that won't be heard tonight, 400 Valley Service Road. Okay, and also I'd like to ask who's going to be sitting tonight since... Uh, well, we have the four regular members. The chairman is absent. Uh, it does make sense uh, to maybe have our new member, Carrie Maddy, maybe observe tonight, um, ask questions, what have you, but maybe not sit tonight anyway and have Mark Parisi sit, and then you'd be first up for next month uh, to sit. So okay. if that makes sense, why don't we do that? And okay. That works. And I'm Paul Wyman. I'm the vice chair. I'm sitting in for uh, Vern Carlson today. And um, we're going to start out with a, uh, uh, with a public hearing, so I'd like to have... Uh, uh, Brian, uh, oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna. I want to introduce the staff first. We've, Alan, well, Fredrickson. Alan Fredrickson, and he's the land use administrator. Yeah, Andy Bellavacqua, Bell town engineer. Yep, yeah, Satania is our uh, stenographer, and I'll start from the left. Carrie Maddy, I'm an alternate. Ken Quick, regular member. Rod Williams, regular member. Brian Cummings, secretary. Mark Bruce, the alternate sitting. Okay. So, again, uh, Brian, uh, can you read the uh, public sure. hearing? This is the first public hearing. Uh, we have one public hearing. This is P24-01S, special permit application as authorized by Section 8.10.1 of JMLAII LLC applicant LN 56 Associates LCC, owner relative to 39th Street Street, map 66, lot 27, plan entitled Final As Built Property, located at number 39 State Street, North Haven, Connecticut, dated 10 12 2012, scale 1 inch equals 10 feet, IL 30 zoning district. Okay, Paul? Okay, uh, is there someone here to present the application? If you could come up and uh, say your name and your address. Uh, yes. And Hi, everybody. My name. Should I sit down? Hi, everybody. My name is Lindsay Shellman. Nice to meet you all, and thank you for your service to the community. Um, I am the single member owner of JMLA II LLC, which is doing business as Forget Me Not Flower Shop. Uh, our, we're doing business at 39 State Street here in North Haven, but the business is registered to. 7 Jetbrook Road in Newtown, Connecticut, 06470. Okay. So do you have anything to present or us with? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I'm the new owner of Forget Me Not Flower Shop. I've owned the shop now for about three and a half months and wanting to do everything, you know, by the books, I was looking at opportunities that we could upgrade some of the offerings from the shop. And so you guys might be familiar that we offer fruit and gift baskets right now. Um, I was applying today for a liquor permit so that we could offer some premium baskets as well, where we put you know, a bottle of wine or maybe a bottle of champagne and some gourmet cheeses inside of those gift baskets as a more premium offering. Uh, so that was why I was applying for the permit. Um, I spent some time uh, down at the next building looking at the maps to make sure that we would be eligible for a liquor permit, uh, which it looked like we were. I notified all, all of my surrounding neighbors um, that I was interested in doing something like this so that they had an opportunity to oppose it if they had any concerns. Um, and this was the first step in the process of applying with, with you all and North Haven. 
uh, and then continuing on to the state of Connecticut for the ultimate liquor permit. So okay. pretty straightforward, but um, you know it was important to me to you know make sure I followed the process officially. Okay, we're going to start out. With, see if anyone has a, has any questions about this. Uh, or, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. I, no, I don't. Okay. Just, I have a quick question, Alan. As uh, you've confirmed that all the notice has been sent out, and we're aware of that, correct? I did, and as a matter of fact, that's why she wasn't here last month. Um, there was a, a small uh, problem with that, um, but she's 100% now, yes. Uh, hi. So there are no additions or changes to the building, right? This is only the services? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And also, uh, I guess I always kind of figured you had to go to the state first, but this is the first process, and then you're going to get a liquor license, essentially? Yes. And yeah. do you know, I know that there are different types of licenses that you request when you go there. Do you know what you're going to request? Like, for um, Let me pull that out. So I'm applying for application for gift basket retail or liquor permit. Okay. Um, That's pretty specific. And, and and I think I understand it's wine and beer. That's what would be in the baskets. Uh, wine, well, or beer. probably wine and champagne. Wine and champagne. Yeah. Okay. I mean, although if if we get a if we get approved and I get a happy customer who wants a beer basket, and we can do that legally, I'll I'll do it. Okay. All right. Thanks. So. I don't have any other questions. Carrie, okay. nothing is consumed on the on the property. No. Okay. Thank you. I I have a question now. Uh, you can't. Uh, people aren't going to be able to come in. And buy a six pack of beer. No, or like no, that. sir. Okay. So that's the type of place. It's just solely for the for your gift baskets and boxes. Yes, right? and, and yes, that's sir. in the portion of the statutes that you're you're going for for that liquor license because there's a whole plethora of statutes for the liquor license. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. So just procedure wise, assuming that Lindsay's successful this evening um, with yourselves she would bring the application into the land use office and the ZEO would sign the application based on your approval and that application form is specific to a gift gift basket license and it cites 30-16 etc et cetera, et cetera, and there's a particular portion so she applies to the state and then the state would approve or deny presumably approve the license just for that particular use and with those particular limitations mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna guess there there are over a hundred different kinds of liquor permits yeah. I didn't even know there was a gift basket liquor permit so uh, it didn't surprise me that they exist but it, it is limited by the application and by the permit that they issue you and I have a copy of that app, not a copy to distribute, although I can I can make copies, but I have a copy of my state application that I can hand out if you guys want to see it. It does specify at the top that it's application for gift basket retail or liquor permit. Did you guys want to pass that over? No. no, no. Do, do we need to, will it be an exhibit that we keep if she submits it? Um, we we would we could um, also make a copy and then give her the original back but uh, if it's uh, I actually looked at it before so I'm okay uh, I don't need it but and I was under the same impression that some of you guys were as was my attorney because I ran this all by him before I started the process and he, he 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 too thought you start with the state but in fact you know we start with North Haven so okay Right. I do have one, one question. Uh, have, have you done this elsewhere before, or is this your first venture? This is my first venture in Florals. I was working in the corporate world. I was running a technology company for the last 10 years, and my experience wasn't awesome with backed by private equity and you know that kind of lifestyle. So I really wanted, I wanted to be in North Haven. We love the community, but we had kids still in Newtown, and I. I we, we just wanted an opportunity to be able to have some control over the business and treat the team well. And, you know, we didn't really have that with, you know, the board control of our previous, you know, previous lives. So so that's why I got into the floral industry. 
and presented a very cool opportunity because I have a lot of experience in sales, marketing, and technology. So we're kind of trying to upgrade or implement some of the tech that can automate what the ladies do manually, but then also improve some of our product offerings um, to some new, cool, exciting type stuff. So that's how, how this came up. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Again, one, one last sure. question. Sorry. Sure, please. Um, just because uh, liquor permits are sensitive to location. Yes. Right. Um, just uh, do you have any plans on moving? That's a challenging building. Um, are you planning on moving at all? And just be aware of those restrictions that would be you know, away from schools and other things like that. So exactly, just, churches just and convalescent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so so we are currently under, we have no plans of moving today. Um, we, we have a three year lease with that building and to your point, yes, it is a challenging building. Yeah. So we're working around that, but I do understand and recognize that if we did move the business, I would have to reapply for a new liquor permit because it is location okay. based. Great. That's so. Okay, thank you, no more questions? No, no. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank but you very much, Chef. Now, because this is a public hearing, yes. you're going to ask for public yes. comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. sure. Well, you, you can go Should back I sit? and sit down. I'm going to okay. ask the. Uh, uh, does anyone um, have? Uh, uh, is anyone opposed to this that would like to speak? Okay. Is there anyone in favor? of this that would like to speak. Okay. <laughs> All right. The public hearing is closed and we're going to go on to the site plans. So. Okay. Well, this is a site plan. It's P24-02. Site plan application for the North Haven Fair Association Incorporated. Applicant and owner relative to 290 Washington Avenue, map 80, lots 12, 13, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Plan entitled Existing Conditions, Properties Located at Washington Avenue and Fairlawn Drive, North Haven, Connecticut. Prepared by Criscolo Engineering, LLC, dated 10-19-2011. Revised 2-1-2024, scale 1 inch equals 50 feet, R-12 and CB-40 zoning districts. Okay. Uh, Hi everyone, my name is Michael Card. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the North Haven Fair Association. And this is Michael Kennedy, also a member of the Board of Directors of the Fair Association. Can you just spell your last name? Card, C-A-R-D. <laughs> nice and easy. Um, we're here for a site plan review and an application for temporary storage of an equipment auction to be held on the property. Um, this equipment auction will include farm equipment, commercial equipment, and non-commercial residential equipment. The event expects to have approximately 100 to 150 vehicles as well as 100 to 150 non-vehicular equipment such as attachments, generators, and other small tools. Um, this one-day auction is planned for April 19th. Equipment could begin to arrive on or after April 1st for the event and slowly trickle in so the, the company that's running the auction would slowly bring in equipment over time to prepare for the auction. Once the auction is over, it'll take about two weeks for all the equipment to be removed from the site and the, the purchasers to pick up equipment. Delivery and pickup of all of the equipment will be via the Washington Avenue entrance uh, to the North Haven Fairgrounds, not via any other entrance. Um, everyone received the, the map in, as part of the proposal for this. We do have one change that we would like to suggest today, and Mike has a couple copies to hand out to everybody. Do you want to give this one? Um, what we'd like to propose is that instead of most of the equipment being on the property directly along the fair lawn edge of the property, we would use our arena area that they run the demolition derbies and other events during the uh, fair itself to do most of the storage of the equipment. Um, the placement would begin in that arena area and then start sort of towards the restroom area, work down the arena, and if there was any overflow, then it would be placed in that four acre section that was the original plan. 
Um, so, my, Michael, just yes. what, what I'm looking at this, where you had over here, the, the, correct, the, the, the dash line area, and then the yep. yellow farther away would be where we and would that propose. That was really up close to Fairlawn. Correct. And so now you've moved it back quite a bit. Correct. Okay. We, there may be some equipment that end up in that four acre area that was originally proposed, but we'll start at the far end towards the arena and work our way out towards the Fairlawn side of the property to keep equipment as internal to the property and away from all the borders as much as possible. Um, we, we can come up with updated um, site plan drawings and with an overlay of that if you guys require it. We're happy to do that. Um, we did receive a number of questions on Friday, March 1st from the North Haven departments about it. Um, the plan that was used, the, the engineer all, had also used the drawings for um, site improvement plans that we had proposed last month. Those were still highlighted on the map, the large maps that everyone received, but that's not part of this. That's what we're already approved and there's no buildings being requested as part of this review. Um, we can add the planning and zoning application number to the site plan as requested. Um, there will be no electrical work or lighting updates or changes planned as part of this. Um, and we can, as requested, do a soil erosion inspection prior to and after the event. Um, there is no plans for any new fencing or signage to, to be done for the event, except for small lawn signs that point people where to park during the event and where to pick up equipment. Um, I think that was all of the questions and points that we had, so we're happy to. Now, this new questions. area that you want to be located, yes. um, Andy, I'll ask you this. Is, it says that there's leach fields over there. I just want to make sure these, this equipment's very heavy. And, the, leech, uh, the leach fields are right behind the restroom, okay. and they will not be parking any equipment over the leach fields. Okay. And that was Mike Kennedy. Yeah, I can't confirm the limits of any of that. Okay. Primarily used equipment. Okay. So, is there any thought to any leaking that may happen? Any of those? All of the equipment that's been in it past years, and Mike can answer because he's worked directly with it, has been shiny looking, yeah. you know, all in good condition, just stuff that's been bought off from companies and being auctioned Usually off. Usually they have about 50, 60 hours on them. You know, they're low hours type <coughs> equipment. There are some that are, that are old and whatnot. They usually take care of any of their own spillage. Okay. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you. They'd be coming in through Washington. And yes. Also, the people that are coming to the auction, they'd be coming in through Washington. Yes, correct. Too. And, and, and that, using the normal be, parking that we use for all of it. They're not going to the be site. parking on Fairlong. No, and okay. that entrance is closed off, and nobody would be coming in that way. That will be closed off then. Yes. Okay. Well, as closed off as it can be. There's no. I won't be opening up the gates. Yes. So any, anything yes. on the back side. So people are going to come through Washington. That's yes. Right. All the vehicles come in, go out. All the vehicles yep. carrying yep. vehicles go in and out through Washington. Correct. Okay. If there was a requirement to maintain a spill kit somewhere on the property in case there was a problem, would that be uh, something that you could deal with? Yeah, they have connections with the hazmat group, you know, like Cisco or, you know. But if that's a requirement, we can put that request yeah. into a company that's running the yeah. auction. And yeah, it's our property. I don't want to see any spillage on our property. Right. Sure. Yeah. During the off hours, overnights, will, will any of the lighting be up, lighting the equipment area? Usually the only time that there's uh, lights on that I put, I leave on is the night before the auction because that's when all the little things are out because we'll take them out of buildings or something like that. It's little things like little jackhammers and you know, wrench sets and stuff like that. And when that stuff's out, then I, I put on floodlights, but it's not shining anywhere on Fairlawn or anything like that. It's usually just right in a given area. If you had a complaint on the lighting and it seems like you've kind of vetted that out, you'd just deal directly with the folks on yeah. Fairlawn if there was yeah, an incident. They, they You'd be receptive to yeah. talking to them about any problems. Yeah, there's no lighting aimed to any Pacific houses or anything like that. It's just down on the ground. And hopefully the move of most of the equipment into the arena area will alleviate a lot of that by moving it away from the, the border of the property. The last year we had a problem relative to um, the entrance through Fairlawn and I had heard uh, over the course of the last eight months or nine months or what have you that you've got that 
problem ironed out at this point. Last year we didn't know at the auction time why trucks were coming in from Fairlawn. We couldn't understand it. Well, if you used Google or Waze or uh, Wave, use any of those apps, it took you to get into the fairgrounds, it took you by way of full road. That's how we found out because I had arguments with truck drivers and they said GPS, GPS, because most of them couldn't speak English. Well, we found out uh, even at the night when we had all department meetings from the town, even police chief fire, or fire chief went and even looked and Google would send you down Fairlawn or Pool Road. Well, we all went after Google and Waz and we kept telling them where the new change was. Well, it was eventually changed. Now, if you Google uh, 290 Washington Avenue, it takes you on Route 5. It doesn't take you down Pool Road. So that should eliminate any of those issues. That's just fair. I thought the only people who knew that were North Haveners. It'd be hard to get for, back there. For some odd reason, they ended up having it come through Pool Road, which it was never advertised as far as any entrance going through Pool Road. You know, that's only used at fair time. Right, and only for walking, to too. Yeah. The other thing, it's just a, a, an old timer question. And Probably before your time too. How many acres did you lose when ninety one went through? Oh, they split us right in half. Yeah, yeah, we lost a lot of acres. If you yeah. if you ever go into the uh, fair office, you'll see yeah. a picture. Yeah, and it's all blown up of everything in town as far as that area before yeah. ninety one came in. Yeah, so it had to have been in the fifties because by the dates of the cars that are in the fields, it's about in the fifties. <coughs> yeah, and it's a lot of acreage. It was it would seem to be, I think. We had, we actually had fireworks at one point in time over there. Yes. Over. Well, we used to have fireworks. I've, I've been involved with the fair since I was five, six years old yeah. is when I was known in strollers. Yeah. But uh, back when we had the trotter track, we used to do fireworks prior. Yeah. And when 91 came through, the state police, the first year 91 was open, they did fireworks. They shut down the highway because everybody stopped to watch the fireworks. <laughs> and since then, we weren't able to do fireworks. And that was back in the mid 60s. Yeah, I that. Thank you. They've got about 24 acres on their contiguous parcels, yeah. and then they've got another 10 and a half or so on Pool Road. Um, I'll bet you they they lost oh, yeah. eight to ten on the on the Close highway 15, at that time, 1960, 1964. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Highway didn't get there until about 65, but. They were assembling parcels quite a while before that. Any questions? I have no further questions. I have one more question. Sure. I, I noticed I was reading through, you mentioned that you're going to have signage up. Yes. Along the <coughs> lawn and pool as well. There's one, so sign, there's one sign I want to put up, and that's down over near Fairlawn, that there is absolutely no fair ent ex entrance from this location. you got to go to okay. Washington Avenue. Was that noted on the site plan? Or, or no, no, that was something that I agreed on last <coughs> year when we had the auction that we got to put signage. Okay. Plus, during fair time, we want to put it to where people are always trying to go down Fairlawn, even though the police officers is usually in the end of Fairlawn, because it's not an entrance, it's only for the buses. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay. One, one other question. You've read all of Alan and Andy's comments, and you're okay with all of them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I think we responded on all okay. of them. Did you, did you, did you, yes. Thank you. No I'd just like, like to say, um, although this is not a public hearing and it doesn't qualify as a public hearing, and, and that's fine, that you do have some members here from the Fairlawn area, and, and they are concerned about things that take place, and I hope that there'll be a good dialogue continuing uh, with the uh, the folks on Fair Lawn and the Fair Association. And it seems that the relationship has, uh, you know, for, for a little while had deteriorated, but I'm glad to see people who are concerned and, and to see the Fair Association making a, a fairly large gesture to move all of this into the, the arena or the circle. Um, I think that'll make a, a big difference, I think. So, anyway, we appreciate that, and we appreciate everyone's input. Okay. Anyway. 
Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. But just we had one question. Do we need to? Do you want us to submit updated site plan? We document? will, and and they're going to deliberate. Okay. Uh, he's going to close this, and we'll we'll shoot out a letter. But I don't mind telling you what's going to be in a letter before you get it. So. Okay. I realize you're a little under the gun on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and uh, we'll, we'll mark the revised drawing uh, exhibit A, okay? Okay, the next site plan is P24-04, site plan application of Daniel Mera, applicant, PAJISCT-DELLC, owner relative to 575 Washington Avenue, Map 95, Lot 36, plan entitled Zoning Location <coughs> Survey of Property Located at 575 Washington Avenue, a.k.a. CD, C dot, Group Number 5, North Haven, Connecticut, prepared by Lewis Associates, dated 11-29-2023, revised 124-2024, scale 1 inch equals 20 feet, IL-30 Zoning District. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Fran McNellis, um, owner of Custom Control. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> McNellis, M C N E L L I S. Uh, I'm the owner of Custom Construction. I'm the contractor hired by um, Elite Limousine, the owner of the building. Um, we've been through a few meetings with Mr. Allen over there from the P&Z and also with the engineer. Um, we have updated site plans. We're <coughs> applying for outdoor storage. Um, we reworked the parking lot to accommodate for some limousine buses. Um, we're trying to park them out of everyone's view, pretty much. Um, we went down the list. They're all, um, you guys are also requiring some site work done to the parking lot. We're going to be in compliance of all of that. We're just looking for a little bit of time to get it done once you guys um, approve or deny this application. Um, we have we have some trees that are going to be put in. Uh, we're going to be using Acer October Glories <coughs> uh, with a two-inch caliper. They're going to be roughly 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, when they come in. We are also um, out by the street. There is, right now there's two entrances, or I should say an entrance and an exit. We're proposing to eliminate one of the entrance or exits to add a few more parking spots. Um, with that, when that project happens, we're also gonna extend the sidewalk to connect from either side so it'll, the sidewalk will flow all the way through our property. Um, we have a total of three, possibly four trees going in. Um, Alan and I spoke, we, you know, we might be required to put one in the, I guess the front left corner. But other than that, everything sits as is. Um, there was a pr proposal, where was it? said if possible to eliminate one row of parking um, in the center which would allow for more room to travel through the parking lot unfortunately I we, we would hope that that would not be set in stone as we need the parking um, we're adjusting we're adjusting the sides to make room so once you do come through the cars and you're able to turn around at each curved island that you'll have enough room to make that swing you know, for a fire truck or for an ambulance. Um, Good evening. May I have your attention, please? The North Haven Library will be closing in 30 minutes. Public computers, copiers, and Wi-Fi will be shutting down in 15 minutes. All purchases from the bookstore and cafe, along with library card applications, must be completed by 745. Thank you. Um, as of now, we reworked the front 
with the handicap ramps and, and parking uh, spots for the handicap. That's all set. Um, we have our final building inspection uh, set for the end of this coming week. Um, setbacks, parking. I think that's really all I have. Um, the stuff that needed to be added to our site plan, I was just waiting for any final stuff that we got out of this meeting to go back to our engineer one more time and get everything finalized, get them stamped, and uh, submit the final copies. Um, other than that, that's really all I have. Now, the Valley um, mentioned something about a, a well or a, 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 your, yeah, sewage disposal is municipal. Uh, let's see, formerly covered, and the, they wanted uh, that well abandoned in place. Uh, which well are we talking about? Right side of the building. The, yeah, the, the water one. supply well. The water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that. That's in. in that's yeah, when the new water main was just attached to the. Uh, the oh, on the right public, side. Yes, yes, yes. I, I guess they're saying that the existing <coughs> water supply well was not abandoned. The way it should be so properly. That's something. Yeah. yeah. So that's something. Okay. You should definitely do. Okay. So get in the band in place professionally. Okay. Um, yeah. It was. They, they did do that. Um, yep. I actually spoke to um, someone from zoning last week. Called me and they didn't even know there was nothing even on file that there was city water in there. Okay. So um, when we went out and checked, it was capped and locked. Yeah. So I just worked with QVHD on that. Yeah. I mean, it's not not a huge deal. So. I think. I'm sorry, uh, Dan Mara. I think that um, possibly that well, it's on the north side of the building, mm -hmm. it may have been used to irrigate the planting stock that they sold there all summer long. So it may have been yeah. a supplementary sort of water source for yeah, them. It's possible because there is an old style spigot out there. So possible. Yeah, this is this is the first time hearing that it was that it came up in conversation. So I I get the right people out there to address it. Yeah. That's why that? we have QVHD. They keep <laughs> track of the stuff. You know? <laughs> I was just wondering if that surface water or actual potable water from right now. I don't know. If <laughs> it might be a good job just to do what QVHD is asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> no idea about that. And I see the setbacks of 75 foot um, overnight. But there's no overnight parking during in that 75 foot. Correct. Yeah, we we went through all the guidelines and that, you know we we put that 75 feet in, and anything that would would stay overnight would be from that line back. Now, are you going to have enough room for cars to go in and out? And have you checked with the state on that? Or yeah, we we did. So the 17 feet minimum there, mm -hmm. um, those all meet the requirements. And and like I said, on the on either side, we made it 24 feet. So that when you are coming around that turn, that you you're able to you know get straighter into the turn in, instead of side swiping the curbs or, or another vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that 17 foot requirement for one way? That's yeah, for two way. Okay. Part of the the problem, I guess, is that's the way it was. So there, if you look at the aerials, you see the sort of four rows of parking two aisles and two two double rows you know and yeah it's tight uh, in reality but yeah I mean it like standard we said, aisle width is 24 feet right that's what we normally require right and, and then so, again yeah. it's, it's kind of existing I mean yeah. like I, I mean, said we just should go with one-way traffic that might be a way to make it a little bit easier so you don't have child cars passing each other well that's that's you know, what we were leaning towards thing. with sure. eliminating the the other entrance was to have everybody just right. go one way around maybe a couple of uh, one-way signs just to show and yep. maybe a couple of painted arrows to show yep. that circulation yep. you know I mean I drive a full-size pickup truck I know if I had to get into this <laughs> parking lot to get around and then I think about your buses and limos getting through there, you know. So that, that that's really where the comment came We've from. We've kind of already set that in place with our staff too. Okay. We're just moving around this way. So. We've had no, no, the, you know, the fire chief hasn't explained, you know, expressed any concerns, right? No. Right. That's correct. Police okay. and fire. Uh, yeah, we 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 spoke about uh, with the fire marshal when he was out there, and, and also um, the building inspector. Um, 
they both said that you know it's, it's, it's really existing parking so we kind of came to an agreement that if we mo we moved in and we lost two spots on each side that it would give more turning radius for the emergency vehicles Fred, how yeah. much parking do you actually need? Because I, I never heard of people driving to the limo. I mean, the limo usually comes to us. <laughs> there. I mean, we have multiple locations, but we currently have 122 vehicles. Okay. Um, of course, they're not all going to be here. But, um, I mean, I would say there we would probably need, you know, 30 spots altogether mm -hmm. um, at most. But the drivers, you know, they come into work, they get their vehicle, and we're open 24-7, so the vehicles are constantly so this going. Is, this is, this, it's employee parking, yeah. basically, for that. Yeah, yeah they, we they, have we have some of our you know vehicles there that you know they're going to come back you know all hours of the day and night and then another driver will come and park his car there use you know the company vehicle. Okay. Now you had mentioned uh, you're going to need some time. What are you thinking for time? What do you, to, to get to complete conditions? everything? Um, taking care of. I don't know. To be honest with you, I haven't. I, I, I think gone. the uh, the five years that they're allotted, I think, is adequate based on oh, yeah. what what they were yeah. talking about before. They're just I mean, looking to not have to do it before well, well, they occupy. Just on that bill, and I think five years is more than enough. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the what, only the only issue lies with us of getting it done right now is we ran into some issues inside the building mm -hmm. that brought us over the construction budget. So, giving us mm -hmm. another year or two would be you know would be great. Sure. So, within that five years would be. Good. more than sufficient for us okay uh, the building <laughs> it's a complete <laughs> it's a complete remodel it's it's beautiful it's beautiful inside it's beautiful inside so so for the buses where, where i mean this is like regular car spaces where would you so if you look at the um at the drawing we have the outdoor sh storage shaded behind you know to the side of the building and behind that's where all the buses would go okay um where the concrete pad is in the rear you okay. would oh, back, take, okay. yeah yeah they, they would, would just be in the rear the back building. there okay yeah. we kind of been working it out bringing them in and out you know parking them on an angle to see what works for us you know turn it around and, and so on now during the day or night the uh, you, you wouldn't be parking the buses up in the no. front parking lot. correct mm -hmm. Yeah, we we, uh, we had a little issue um, we were moving inventory from one location to another and we had buses brought to this location so that we can measure and then you know someone called uh, the zoning department but as you know we're here <laughs> trying to okay. make sure we do it the right way okay. diplomacy reigned <laughs> thank you Thank you. Well, I have nope, another sorry. one. I'm sorry. Question. I'm sorry. Um, the parking along the side in the shaded area that's going to be, you know, that's beyond that 75 foot Correct. restriction line, is yep. that existing as well? Yeah. Everything is there is existing. All, okay. the, the entire parking lot is completely existing. <coughs> yeah. We're just reworking spots and adding the islands. We're not changing, okay. adding asphalt, subtracting, yeah, we're, or we're it's all existing. We're actually losing spots instead of adding spots yeah. with the islands going in. So. I'm only asking because I'm looking at that gravel ramp. Yeah, we added we added the gravel ramp. So what's the dif the distance between those parking spots and the edge of that ramp? So the way we're trying to propose is to put the buses long ways against the that property line, which will still give us the 17 feet. Okay. Right. Okay, that's it. Thank you. No more questions. Sure. No, no. Thank you. Alan, when would we uh, see approval or denial or notes on this? Just have only a, uh, uh, for my engineer. Yeah, yeah, They'll deliberate uh, momentarily. Okay. And then we'll, yeah. we'll okay. see how to get them to you. So. Thank you. Yeah. We have uh, one change of use tonight. So, if you uh, do, 100 Broadway. Come up and say your name. Go ahead. Uh, we are 100 Broadway. Well, my name is Paul Brandt. Yes. 100 Broadway LLC. Okay. We own the medical building on uh, that backs up to the Quinnipiac River. And we are, uh, we're going to put a tenant in there and change part of the main floor into a, a nail salon. Very tough to find rentals and
try to do whatever we can. It's been sitting vacant because most of the independents are going to the major health care systems right now. So it's 185 square feet. We're going to put two nail stations in and a pedicure station. In. Okay. So it's a relatively um, minor change of use to go from office to service. It's also a relatively minor change of use because it's 185 square feet, mm -hmm. but nonetheless yep. falls here uh, um, because of a technicality, kind of. But uh, anyway, okay. Does anyone have any questions? No, I have no, no. questions. It seems no. pretty no. straightforward. No questions. Thank you. That's good. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. All right. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion that we go into deliberation. I'll second that. So the motion was made by Brian Cummings, the second was Mark. Okay. In deliberation. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll start with uh, 39 State. Anyone have anything to say about the uh, liquor permit? I would uh, make a motion to approve for the application at 39 State Street. I'll second that. All right. Ten. Quick. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Okay. Good. We we'll go on to uh, the uh, fairgrounds, 290 Washington Avenue. Second. Uh, can, should we put in that we also want to? Who seconded? Rod Williams. Rod, what should we also put in about the um, the site plan? Site plan revisions. Yeah. The, yes. Yeah, and, th and that's necessary yeah. because the, the problem with the drawing that we have right now, you can't tell what was approved for this application. So, we're, so we're, they just need to take the notes off from the last one we approved. So that this application stands on it. So own. that's the approval we have tonight. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so it would, yeah, they'll revise the plan. And your, after and your comments on about the signs having to, be, you know, get application. Yeah, they volunteered that they're yeah. going to add the sign at yeah. Fairlawn, so we'll, we'll include that, and we'll um, include then if if it's the uh, commission's desire to keep a spill kit on on the property during the during the event. Um, I would, and then, I would hope the runner, the operator of the auction, would have already been doing that regardless. Okay. But, uh, it would be nice if we made sure of that and put that onto them. So I think we've got it. Okay. One full on. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. And the next is 575, uh, the uh, elite. Uh, Limo building. I have no questions. No objections to it. Uh, I don't think we need any discussion. The, I think the, the well issue should be addressed. So yeah. We'll follow up with the uh, health yeah. department on that. Yeah, follow up with the the uh, Quinnipiac Valley Health on that on that well that you had there. And, um, anyone want to make a? I'll, I'll make a motion to a, a, approve it based on. Uh, Quinnipiac Valley is satisfied with your well, and uh, you're talking about one-way traffic around the parking lot. Yes, so one-way sign in the, 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 in the front. Yeah, in the front parking lot. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That'll just make the circulation better and make it less okay. dangerous. Yeah. That's, that's not so I, I, I make a motion. I make a motion based on those two uh, comments, and then mm -hmm. we go forward with it. Good. I'll second that. Okay. Very good. Uh, so, all in favor? Aye. Good evening. Aye. The Dorkhaven Library will be closing in 15 Any? minutes. Please Any? begin to make your final selections for checkout at this time. Thank Aye. you. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. 
Okay. So now we have the. Um, uh, you want to go? To, let's go do the change of use. Get that out of the uh, way. Change of use for the nail salon, 100 Broadway. I'll make a motion to approve the change of use to the nail salon for 100 Broadway. I can second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And all opposed? Okay, uh, the next uh, item is the bond release for the first fuel. Andy, if you want to. Uh, yeah, this one needs a little explanation. Um, so, back in May of last year, uh, we had a, a $30,000 bond release for this exact same property. Uh, that was the bond that was associated with the construction work that was done, I don't know, 20 years ago or whenever it was. Commission voted to release the bond. All the work was done. We were satisfied with it. Well, what I didn't realize at the time was there was actually two $30,000 bonds. And I think what happened was this actually started as, this, this started as a project. They posted a $30,000 bond. Then they came in to make some additional revisions to their original approval got it approved a second time, and then posted a second $30,000 bond. So how that, I'm not sure how that second bond ended up being posted, but it should never have been. So now all I'm asking for is a release just to right that wrong, and you know, that'll, that'll be all set. Those are five years apart. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Somebody in their book peeping in has not paying attention either. Yeah. The, the owner had actually said that he had a few things going on in his life at the time, and uh, he neglected to follow up on getting the the older one released, and as a result, it just sat there. And, um, it's, it really bonds a responsibility of the, of the bond provider um, to police when they believe it ought to be released or what have you, and um, this is... Uh, more unusual because the second bond was actually released and there was the discovery of the first bond the by the insurance company. So, anyway, so, anyway that's interesting, but I'll in a dull a, sort of way. Yeah. I'll make a motion to release the errant bond. <laughs> I'd be happy to second that. <laughs> okay, you all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So, now we're going to talk about the uh, the minutes. Does everybody look at the minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the February meeting. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll I'll second that motion. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, all all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. All right, I think that's everything. And uh, you must have met, met No, I, and, uh, I might say, good job. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You can take an hour. Well, we'll a motion to adjourn. We'll take yeah. motion to adjourn. <laughs> I don't know. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Burns meetings take a lot longer. <laughs> the preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.